welcome to part five of the repurposed amp video series. This was going to be waveforming where we're going to correct that sine wave distortion. But I've done a lot of thinking and I think what we're going to end up doing is repurposing our repurposed amp. The plan is, is to get the 6L6 out. We're going to put in an 807 because it can handle the high voltage and it should drop right in on bias. I tried. Let me show you where we're at and what I'm going to do. All right, so as you know, I have been struggling with getting the bias right on the 6L6. I also had issues with drive, so I added the 6C4. Also played around with the 5Y3 versus the 5U4, trying to get enough current to drive that 6L6. But with the research that I've been doing, I found that the 6L6 obviously does not like 500 volts. We're running it right at its limits. I found that with external bias control, I had to go up around 80 milliamps to clean up that sine wave. The output transformer is only rated at 60. And obviously, if you have this at 500 volts with 80 mils, you're going to flame out the 6L6. So many of you were emailing me and saying, hey, Terry, why don't you just put in an 807? And I did some research, and sure enough, the 807 is rated for 500 volts of Class A operation. I just happen to have a chart here I'll throw up, and you can see it. So that guy can handle 500 volts at about 50 milliamps of current with about uh, 500 ohms on the cathode to bias it. So the plan is, out comes the 6L6. We're going to remove the 6C4. The rest of the circuitry is going to stay the way it is. We're going to put in the 807 and he'll have his little plate cap. So I'm going to swing the high voltage lead up to the plate cap of the 807. We're going to go with the 7K tap. On our bottom side there will be some changes. The power supply is going to change. I'm going to keep the filter caps but the voltage divider is going to leave and I'm going to add some Xenier diodes to control the screen current for the 807. So let me cut to the new schematic. I've redone the schematic and I've redone the layout. So once again, if you guys want this information, just send me an email and I'll send you the current print. The old print of the 6L6 amp would work fine if you were to reduce the high voltage to say 400 volts then I bet you she'd drop right in place. But in this case we are limited by the output of that power transformer and there's no way that I can lower it to accommodate the 6L6 so that's why we're going with the 807. So if you look at the print you can see pretty much everything stayed the same except for some changes to the power supply and of course the base configuration on the 807 is different. I'm going to start the process by changing out these components in the power supply. Like I say a lot of this will stay the same, but the voltage divider is going to come out. We're going to have a 15K resistor here. Then we go over the jumper, and there's going to be two 130 volt Xenier diodes in series. This filter cap stays the same. We're going to land another terminal board for the power supply that feeds the 12AX7. Alright, the power supply is reconfigured. You can see my new 15K resistor dropping the voltage to the two Zeniers in the back. So we're looking for approximately 270 volts on the screen. She's kind of building up there. So currently I'm giving that to the screens of the 6L6 just to make sure that the power supply is operating. The 807, I'm sure, is going to draw a different current. So this number will vary when we get to that point. I also disconnected the power to the 6C4. So let me grab this lead now. We'll go to the 12X7. See what we're getting there. You can see we're also at the same screen voltage because I have not put in the dropping resistor and the additional cap for the 12AX7 circuit yet. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is put a terminal board here, swing some wiring up with another resistor and a cap to feed the 12AX7 100K resistors. All right, there's a the new terminal board, screen resistor, little 10K resistor with a cap that feeds the preamp section. Now I need to change out the socket and get the new 5-pin 807 socket installed. 8-pin socket's out, 5-pin socket's in. Let's get it wired up. Now remember, I'm not going to use this brown wire. That was the 5K tap. We're going to go with the blue wire, which was the 7K, and that will go to the plate cap on top of the amp. Okay, mission complete. I've got all the wiring in place. The 6C4 tube right now is abandoned. There's still filament voltage here, but of course there's no tube installed. Over here is our new 500 ohm bias adjustment resistor, which goes to the cathode of the 807. This line here is a screen circuit, and there's my little screen resistor that's being fed by the Xenier diode system in the power supply. So, let's get the tubes installed, fire it up, adjust the bias, and then take a look at that sine wave, and hopefully it's perfect. All right, there's that 807 installed with a beautiful porcelain cap. Blue line is the 7K tap. Now the brown one underneath is insulated and tucked away. 5Y3, 12AX7, no 6C4. So let's go ahead and flip it outside, see what that bias looks like. So at this point, I do not have the low side of the bias resistor connected to ground because I'm going to be putting my milliamp meter in line so that I can watch the current through the 807 tube. When we're done, then I'll go ahead and wire that up. But right now, I need access to that cathode current. All right, as we did in the first test, I'm going to monitor the current. We're going to bring up this guy on a bariac. So that's safe. I'm going to make sure the thing's standard control. If not, I can turn it down quickly. So right now, we're looking for the current through that 807. My target, according to my little schematic, is 50 milliamps. And that is right off of the tube data chart that I think I showed you earlier. If not, I'll repost it. Anyway, here we go. You see we're pulling current. The other good thing to do is let the current come up and make sure that it stabilizes. If it just keeps going up and up and up, you probably got something wrong. It's time to turn the thing down. You can see we're stabilizing around 37.5 mils. I'm at about uh, 80 volts. There's 100. I've got the bias resistor right now maxed out, so it's somewhere around 500 ohms, but I can decrease that and pull more current if I need to. There's full voltage. 807 looks happy. About 48 mils. Say 49 mils. Okay. Nothing went up in flames, so let's go ahead and hook up the scope and audio generator and see what the sine wave looks like. Alright, we've got a lot going on here. Monitoring the current still. We're going to use a variac. My scope is set up. Monitoring the output across a dummy load, and we're using leader generator for an input. So I'm going to bring her up slow. Right now, my volume is all the way down. Masters all the way up, tone controls straight up. Here comes current. So hopefully this thing has one gorgeous sine wave. Because that's what we're after. The 6L6 couldn't do it. Remember it had that uh, rolling hill look to the sine wave. Well, this 807 supposedly is happy at 500 volts. At 50 mils, we're pretty close. So here we go. I can hear it. Hear it? Let's take a look at the scope. Oh yeah. Perfect. Symmetrical sine wave. 
So it appears as though the 807 was the fix after all. I'm hovering just under 50 mils. And it looks like uh, pulling about a half amp at idle. Looking good. Let's uh, take a guitar now and hook it up and see how it sounds. All right, here she is fired up full voltage. Still coming into it with one kilohertz signal. So there she is on the scope. Now when I really crank it, you see that top starts around a little bit. But see she goes right into an oscillation that appears to be in the preamp circuit because if I bring back the master, I can still do it. So, I'm going to take a look at the signal routing in the preamp section. So remember, we had the 6C4 in there and the wiring is kind of dancing over the top of the 12AX7. That's probably what it is. So I'm going to remove the 6C4 tube because we obviously have plenty of gain on this amp. Clean up that wiring and see if that improves that little oscillation that we're seeing. All right, 6C4 is gone. And now you see this coax that's coming over here to the 0.022 coming off of this side of the 12AX7. So I'm routing that signal away from the rest of the preamp. We swing over here to the master and then go to the 807. So let's see if that crazy oscillation's gone. All right, same test, I'm letting her warm up. Master's all the way up. Treble bass, straight up, volume's down. I can hear it, let's take a look at the scope. Yep, gone. That's full volume. Master's all the way up. Remember I had it with the volume even with the master back. I still had that oscillation gone. So I betcha that this amp is going to really perform now. Well here's the moment you've been waiting for. I plugged in a guitar. You guys know about my fine playing. But anyway, I'll have some guys come over later and play it, but I just need to do this for testing. So here is our noise floor. It's full volume. No signal applied. With volume all the way down, dead quiet. Very cool. Now we'll hook up the guitar, if I can do this one-handed. There we go. Bring it up a bit. About three quarters away, how's that sound? And we'll strum the old guitar. Bring back the master, take her volume all the way up. You can see that 807 is doing a great job. So next, all right, well, mission complete. Now we finally got that repurposed amp operating the way it should. Obviously, the key here is select the proper tube for the voltages that you're going to apply. In this case, the 6L6 was not it. And many of you wrote in to me and said, hey, Terry, why don't you try an 807 or a 6550? Did I listen? No. Did I fail? Yeah but it was a good experience. The 807 was a tube of choice if you're at 500 volts and it really looks like it's performing well. So in the next video, I'm gonna get those guys back over here and they can play it again. And they better love it because I don't have any other tubes to try. We'll see you then.